గురుకుల ఉద్యోగ గైడ్ లైన్స్ ప్రోగ్రాంలో ఈరోజు ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ గురుకులం సబ్జెక్టు గురుకులం నోటిఫికేషన్లో ఇంగ్లీష్కు ఉన్న ప్రాముఖ్యత ఏంటి అని మనం ఈరోజు తెలుసుకుందాం ఓవరాల్గా ఇంగ్లీష్ సబ్జెక్టు గురించి మనకు వివరించడానికి మనతో డాక్టర్ సుమిత్ర రాయ్ సీనియర్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మనతో ఉన్నారు మీకు కూడా ఏమైనా సందేహాలు ఉన్నా స్క్రీన్ కింద రన్ అవుతున్న నెంబర్కి ఫోన్ చేసి మీ ప్రశ్నను స్పష్టంగా అడగచ్చు మీరు ప్రశ్న అడిగేటప్పుడు మీ టీవీ వ్యాల్యూ మీట్లో పెట్టుకోండి నమస్తే మేడం నమస్తే ఫస్ట్ టైం గురుకులం ఈసారి ఇంగ్లీష్లో పెట్టారు మేడం చాలామంది తెలుగు సబ్ తెలుగు మీడియం విద్యార్థులు రాయబోతున్నారు చాలా వాళ్ళు భయంలో ఉన్నారు ఇంగ్లీష్ ఎలా రాయాలి ఏంటి అని చెప్పేసి ఓవరాల్గా ఇంగ్లీష్ సబ్జెక్ట్ గురించి వివరించండి మేడం గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ యాజ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ నో ఇంగ్లీష్ హెస్ బికమ్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టుడే సో ఇఫ్ యాజ్ టీచర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ యువర్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఇస్ గుడ్ ఇట్ విల్ బీ beneficial for the next generation why you are suffering is because your english teachers did not teach you well so how does one learn english that is what i am going to tell you today the first thing is that you should make the learning of english natural it should be like your mother tongue it should not be like learning a foreign language we never learn our mother tongue by learning rules or by looking at the dictionary we learn it by exposure so i would tell all the people who are appearing for gurukul to start learning english from real life but then that is difficult because you have an exam so today let me tell you from the examination point of view how you should prepare for your exam but remember the exam is only the starting point it is not the end of your life once you get a job you have to teach english to your students even if you teach science or you teach maths your english is important because a good teacher is a role model the students will learn from you and whatever you teach their english will improve if you are teaching in correct english so how does one tackle the errors which we make in english what are the common errors how to correct these errors and how to perform well in the examination this is what i would like to tell you remember that communication implies speaking and writing but then unless you listen and read you cannot speak and write so make all these four skills important today i will only concentrate mainly on grammar that is structures of english pronunciation punctuation spelling i think is not there in your examination but in real life that is very important pronunciation when we speak english does it sound like english or does it sound like our mother tongue we have to be very careful about this then we have punctuation even if you want to write a leave letter to your principal you need correct punctuation if you make a mistake then your boss will think you do not know spelling all of us make so many spellings thousands of people ask me how to improve your spelling and the most important part is vocabulary how exactly we can know more words how to use them correctly how we can express ourselves by knowing a lot of words in english but not very difficult ones it should be simple words put simply so today let us concentrate mainly on structures and vocabulary but there are some slides on uh, pronunciation punctuation and spelling also which i might touch upon i expect all of you to get do well in the exam to get the job and then continue with these three aspects Today let us talk mainly about grammar and vocabulary because almost all competitive exams we have these items let us see for instance first indians make a lot of mistake in the use of articles why is it that we find articles so difficult the reason is because our language doesn't have an article we do not have the concept of articles like english has if you belong to a language which is close to english maybe they will have articles but our indian languages are different they are similar 
to each other, but they are different from English. So, we have to learn certain things where we make a lot of mistakes. For instance, the use of articles. Whenever you read English from today, whenever you read the newspaper or you look at an advertisement or you read anything, please underline the articles. There are in English three articles, the alphabet A, the first alphabet in English that is A, pronounced as A, uh. it is not pronounced as A, I do not say A student, I say A student, I do not say A book, I say A book. So, very important article a uh, and article an. An is an article which is exactly same in meaning to the article a, uh, but their usage is different. Article a uh is used where the sound of the following noun is a consonant sound. Suppose we say camera, then we say a camera because camera begins with the sound k, k is a sound which is a consonant sound, obviously no problem. When you have a word like university, you know I am sitting in Ambedkar university. So, although it starts with u, which we say is a vowel sound, but the pronunciation is not vowel, we are pronouncing as university, that is the sound year, year is a consonant sound. So, we do not say an university, we say a university. Like that you have the word an, so, suppose you have a word like egg. So, e is a vowel sound, a is a vowel sound, we say egg, egg is a vowel sound, therefore we say an egg implying one. Very often people you know especially our Indian speakers use the word one instead of using a or an. I have given you an example you can see, you say I want one book, that is not good English, it is correct English, grammatically it is correct, but it is not good English. It is like you know people make fun of new speakers of Telugu, have you seen in movies? You know people who are learning to speak Telugu, we make fun of them, because they make such mistakes. They say give me a book is good idiomatic English, give me one book meaning is the same, but it is not the same as far as correct English is concerned. Since we are worried about correctness, we have to say, do not say give me one egg or give me one pen or give me one paper, say a, uh, give me an egg or give me a glass of water. Like that we use a and an instead of one. There are also many uses of a and an and these uses you will have to learn, but learning is not perfecting. You know our students in schools and colleges get all corrects in correction of errors. If we give correction of sentences, all students get 10 on 10, but when they speak or when they write, they make those mistakes. So, I would like you to become conscious of the use of articles a uh, and an, where will you use them? You know suppose you say our, the word is written as h o u r, h is her sound, but we are not pronouncing hour, we are pronouncing our, her is not pronounced, o u r is pronounced. Then we say an hour, please meet me after an hour. That means, we are using the correct article. There is also something called as the definite article. After doing this, you read all the you know examples which I have given you. Here the word is there, he is a honest person. We so do not say honest, we say honest, o is pronounced, o is a sound which is a vowel sound. So, we say he is an honest person we do not say honest. These are examples given on your screen, but apart from your screen you can have many more examples. Every day whenever you read, whenever you are exposed to English, suppose you listen to English news, look at the way in which the articles are being used. Then we come to the next one 
and that is the definite article. The definite article implies a particular thing or a particular object. Suppose in the earlier slide we had that I am going to a university, a university means any university, you are not pointing out. Suppose I am coming here to B R Ambedkar University, then I will say I am going to the university, that means exact. The pinpoint is to a specific object, to an object which is being pointed out. Earlier he said give me a book, I do not want a book, I do not want any book. A implies any one. Suppose you go to the library, there are thousand books. You say, I want a book, they will give you one book, any one book. You do not say that. You want a specific book, then you say, I want the book. You know, the book would imply that you have very clear idea that you are pointing out to one in a group. That is why the is very often used whenever we are using the superlative degree of adjective, you know highest, lowest, deepest, thinnest, tallest, these are all called superlative degree. So, because superlative means only one, see the example on your screen, this is the best city, best is a superlative degree of good. Therefore, whenever we use superlatives, we always look at the article th that is specific. Suppose you want to specify something which is only one in the entire universe, then you say the sun rises in the morning. That means, we have only one sun in the solar system, there is only one sun, though obviously we are looking at that one pointing specific. The moon will be full tomorrow, the moon only one, we do not have ten moons. Therefore, we are pointing out to that person, but this article is never used when we are using a proper noun. We do not say the Srinivas, although we mean there are 10 boys in the class who are called the Srinivas, but we never use the Srinivas unless we want to point out to one of them. Usually, we do not use it with proper nouns. You say out of 10 Srinivases, the Srinivas whom I want is wearing a yellow shirt. That means, you are pointing out to a single one, there the meaning has changed. Otherwise, proper nouns we do not use. We do not say the India, we say India, India is one, but we do not use proper noun there. But there are certain countries where the proper noun is used, like we say the USA. USA is always the, the reason is because it is United States of America, that expansion. Earlier we used to have USSR, that also was as the, whereas if we say Russia, we do not say the Russia, we say only Russia. So, like that we have to learn what is called as remedial. English is always learnt by remedial practice, that means you spot an error. When you read the newspaper, you say, oh, I am making so many mistakes, I am using English, but some mistake is there in my English. So, be aware where you require an article and where you do not require an article. Usually, almost all nouns other than proper nouns require articles in English, but there are certain places where a noun is used to indicate the general aspect. There we do not use article, that concept is called zero article, but we do not have that slide here. So, I am just explaining to you, please remember. We should help society, society is a noun. Now, we feel like saying we should help the society, the society would mean any one aspect of society, any one part of society, but I am not talking about any one part of society, I am saying that as educated Indians, we should help all aspects of society, then society should be without article. Suppose we want to talk about a particular society, then we say the society for that particular aspect. If you want to say, I want to help the society which is made out of poor people, so I am going to help only poor, 
I am not going to help anybody else. So, there the society is legitimate. Similarly, you know, whenever the government changes auto fares, you might have seen the auto rights pay by meter. Very good, that is excellent English. Sometimes they make a mistake in article, they say pay by the meter. This is a very dangerous, you know, meaning wise, it is very dangerous because what does it mean? pay by the meter. That means, if my meter is wrong, you have to pay more money. That meaning nobody understands. They feel, is it correct pay by meter or is it correct pay by the meter? Here, the is not correct because the means that you have tampered with your meter, that you are charging extra, that you are not following the meter. So, we have to be very careful where to use. Suppose, somebody says, I am going to hospital that means, that person is going for treatment. If I say I am going to school or college, that means I am teaching there or I am studying there. That means, the noun is for its primary purpose. Suppose, the hospital is very beautiful like our Osmania hospital building is so beautiful. You are a tourist, you want to see that. Then you say, I am going to the hospital, not I am going to hospital. If you say, I am going to hospital, people will ask you, are you feeling ill? Are you not well today? Which means, meaning has changed. By putting the article or removing the article, we have changed the meaning. That is why articles are so important. One is that, if you do not use the correct article, then your English is not English at all. Because English does not have the sentence without the use of proper articles. Most of us make mistakes in the use of articles. That is why it is very essential that we should be very careful whenever we see the use of the articles. The only way to learn is not from a grammar book, not from a lecture by a teacher who tells you articles are important, but from your everyday occurrence. From today, from just now, if you speak one sentence in English, you see, does it need an article? Did I put an article correctly or not? If you say, people want to learn English, here people does not need article, because we are talking about everybody who wants to learn English today. Suppose, you want to say some group, you know the Gurukul, people who are appearing for Gurukul want to learn. Then you say, the people who are appearing for this exam want to learn. That means, you are making it specific. So, where it is unspecified generalization, do not use an article, that is a concept called zero article. Otherwise, please use an article. Then we come to the noun and verb agreement. Here also, many people make mistakes. That is, we have first and second person nouns and pronouns, which take the verb in its bare form. I say that, I study, I teach, you study, you teach. But when I want to put it in the third person, I will say he teaches, that means I add e s. She teaches or she studies. So, the verb has two forms in the present tense. Lot of mistakes are made in this. This is called as the noun verb agreement. Similarly, other verbs, you know the verb do is used for first, second person, does is used for third person singular. Please remember, plural has again the same as first, second person. I say, they do the work, he does the work, she does the work, he and she are third person pronouns, I do the work. So, I do, he does. This is what we call as the subject verb agreement. So, in all verbs, whether we take lexical verbs or auxiliary verbs, we have this difference in the present tense. The past tense, no problem. Suppose, I say that I eat, he eats, but I ate, he ate, no difference. In the past tense, first person, second person, third person, no difference at all. So, in the first person, we have to be very careful that when we are using singular form, the first second person is different from the third person singular. 
look at the examples which are given on the board. We cannot say she do not come to school regularly, to college regularly. You can say I do not come to college regularly, you do not come to college regularly, they do not come to college regularly. But the moment you are saying he or she or it, you have to say does not. Similarly, the gardener looks after the plant. Suppose they were gardeners, the gardener and the watchman look after the plants, two people. So, plural, we can use that form. So, third person plural has the same form as first person that is without s. If you add s, it becomes the, you know, when we add s to the noun, it becomes plural. When we add s to the verb, it becomes singular. That is the difference we have to keep in mind. That singular third person verbs always require that form and that is the s form, whichever you are using. Whereas, if you use the verb to be, there are many forms. They say I am, you are, he or she or it is and they are. So, second person, third person plural have the same form. First person has a totally different form, I am, you cannot use with anything else. You say I am a student, I am a teacher. You cannot say you am a teacher, you have to say you are. This is called noun verb agreement. We have to know which one to use where. Similarly, have and has. Only has is used for the third person singular. He has, he has a house. I have a house, not I has a house. Similarly, whenever we use any of the other verbs, we have to keep following s. And where the verb is, you know, requires e s, we have to add e s also depending on the spelling that comes in the aspect of spelling. So, this is the noun verb agreement. Similarly, we have to judge whether the subject is singular or plural. This is what it comes in competitive exams usually you know. The chairman and not the members agrees to the proposal. Now, so, so look at the structure of the subject it is so huge the chairman and not the members. So, the subject is so huge, here subject is only one, you know on your screen subject is only one word, but here the subject is a huge phrase. So, you have to understand what is the subject, members is plural, should we take plural or should we take singular. So, we look at the meaning, the members, uh, the chairman and not the members agrees to the proposal. So, chairman agrees, members do not agree. The members and not the chairman agree to the proposal, members agree. Is that okay? So, I do not have that on the screen. I hope you will be able to understand these things. So, what you have to do in grammar is not learn by heart and then produce in the examination. Grammar is not done like that. Grammar is done by experience. You try to inculcate the experience of language you try to inculcate the inwardness of language, then you get some benefit. Then we have in structures the tenses, you know we make a lot of mistakes in tenses, because our language tenses and English tenses have a difference. Suppose I ask one of you, what do you eat for lunch? Then you say I will eat rice. In our language, it means that I always eat rice. I want to say that I eat rice every day. You know, in our state, we all eat rice in the afternoon. We do not eat anything else. So, but the meaning, the English, what meaning you have given? I will eat rice. That means, till today you have not eaten rice. From tomorrow, that is future, you are going to start eating rice, which is not correct. From the childhood, you have been eating rice. It is not as though you have not been eating rice before. So, we use will all the time. I will study, I will do the exam, I will do without realizing that whether it is future we are talking about or it is present we are talking about. When we want to talk about the present, we use what is called as the universal present tense. 
the universal present tense works across the tenses. Suppose I say that I speak English, that means present past future, I speak English. I learn English, that means present past future, I have been learning, that kind of meaning comes. Suppose I say, I leave for Chennai tomorrow, the word tomorrow says that leave is future, but it is correct English to say, I leave for Chennai tomorrow. What is the reason? Because I have made the plan now present, the action is future. Therefore, the plan is most important here, not the action. That is why the present is called as universal present. But for your competitive exam, what is important is on your screen and that is the maximum mistakes we make is in the present perfect, past perfect and simple past. Let me try to explain quickly one by one. The present perfect is a tense which is similar to simple past. Both of them imply that the action is finished, but the present perfect has a difference and that is the action, the effect of the action is in the present and the simple past is where we use the exact time in the past. Suppose you say last year, last week, yesterday, you know one hour back, when you are mentioning exact time, always use simple past. Whereas, if the action is relevant now, you know if you say I have learnt English, that is simple present tense, that is, that is present perfect, I am sorry, it is present perfect tense. If you say I have learnt English, that means you still know English. Suppose you say I had learnt English, past perfect, that means you forgot English, you learnt it in the past now you do not remember. So, the difference between present perfect and past perfect is that present perfect has effect on the present action in the past, past perfect has no effect on the present, past action, past effect. Simple present is past action with mention of time. You see on your board, uh, on your screen the sentences are given. We had seen the movie yesterday. We had seen the movie yesterday implies that now I have forgotten what is the movie. Suppose you say I, you have seen Bahubali, then I will ask you what is the story, can you tell me the story. Then say I had seen the movie yesterday, that means I do not know the story, that means I forgot. Action of the past, forgotten in the past, no effect on the present. Suppose you say we saw the movie yesterday, it makes sense, that means that is the most correct sentence. We saw the movie yesterday, yesterday mention of date. We had seen the movie, no need for time, that is yesterday word is not necessary at all. Suppose you say we have seen the movie, that means I remember the movie, I do not want to see it again. Some your friend comes and says, shall we go for the movie again? Say no, I have seen the movie, that means I remember the movie, why will I see the movie again? This implication is important. Whenever you come across tenses, you will find in your newspaper hundreds of uses of the perfect, present perfect. Every day they are using present perfect, you know, that the leader has given a speech in such and such a place. This has been, this has happened. That means they are saying that action is complete, I am reporting in the newspaper, but effect of the action is going to come now. Parliament has passed GST. What does it mean? That the action is finished, but the effect of GST is now, the effect is still there. Suppose after 20 years we can say the parliament had passed GST, that means GST is gone, finished, nobody is following GST anymore, which we do not want, we want it to be there. So, wherever it is like that, you have to understand that grammar is closely related to meaning. If you learn the tenses without learning the meaning, it is difficult. To do all the 12 tenses, to do the active tenses and the passive tenses will take at least you know 20, 30 hours, difficult. But you will be teachers, I am sure you will teach these things. I cannot tell you, because remember language for language self-learning is very important. Now we come to 
another aspect of verbs and that is modal verbs which have the infinitive form. The verb has a finite form and an infinitive form. Finite means where the verb is used as a verb. Infinite means where the verb is used as a root form not in the function of action. So, we have here the modal verb is also a verb, but it is a helping verb. It is not a main verb. We call main verbs as you know lexical. Lexicon means dictionary. So, where the dictionary meaning is the meaning of the verb, then it is a lexical verb. That means, verb is equal to action that we call as a lexical verb. All other verbs in English, which are used in every sentence are all helping verbs. In the helping verbs, we have primary that is is etcetera, all those I gave you to be, then have, has and had and do, does, did, done etcetera. These are called as primary auxiliary verbs and the next ones are modal. Modal implies they indicate the mood. So, if you say I can walk fast, that means you are showing mood capability. Everybody cannot walk as fast as you, you can walk fast. Suppose somebody tells you, you should study, that means they are telling you the mood, that means they are giving you advice, please study. Similarly, you can say, can you help me? You are using a polite form using a helping verb. Somebody says, may I come in? They are asking for permission. These are all the moods which are indicated by the modal verbs. So, we learn modal verbs and we try to apply them. Modal verbs also have to be put in agreement with the usage. Whenever we use the modal verb, we have to use the auxiliary in its, uh, we have to use the lexical verb in its infinitive form. We often use it in the bare infinitive form or we use it in the two infinitive form or the participle form, all these are infinitives. Unless they have helping verbs, they do not have a finite function. Look at your screen where you will find mistake is there in the first sentence. I should have went to the market, went is the past tense, it is not an infinitive form of the verb. So, we should say I should have gone to the market. Gone is the past participle form of the verb go. So, we should we use that form I should have gone. Here we are using one modal auxiliary, one primary auxiliary, one lexical verb in its infinitive form. Students did not understood. Now, we are using understood in the past tense. Past tense cannot be used with the modal verb or with any auxiliary verb. The auxiliary verb is used did not, negative of the auxiliary. This small apostrophe indicates a contracted form. You know, we are removing O and we are putting the apostrophe to say did not has become did not. So, we have to say the infinitive form. The infinitive for the tense form understood is understand. So, the students did not understand the lesson. We are using the infinitive understand and not the tense form understood. This also comes under that. Then we have verbs divided into transitive and intransitive. Now, if you if a verb requires a subject, all verbs have. If a verb requires an object, then we have to be very careful and tell use it as a transitive verb. We have two verbs which almost mean the same, say and tell. You know, I have used that example here, the example of tell. Suppose you say, I want to say a story, that is wrong English. If you say, I want to say a story, then you are using an in, intransitive verb as transitive. You have to say, I want to tell you a story. Tell is correct. So, the first sentence which you can see on your screen, 
I shall tell about corruption. This makes tell into an intransitive verb. Tell is not intransitive. If you look at your dictionary, you will find that tell is a transitive verb. So, it requires an object. An object can be a noun. It cannot be a preposition. About is a preposition. So, we cannot use it like that. So, we say I should tell you about corruption. You is a pronoun which can act as an object. Obviously, sentence is correct. Or you can say I shall speak about corruption. Now, you can see easily that speak is being used as an intransitive verb. Speak can be used as both. Then we find easily that the differences have to be understood. When you look at your dictionary, you must find out what is the function of the word. Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? Is it a preposition? Is it a verb? Then look at it. What kind of verb is it? Is it an auxiliary verb or is it a lexical verb? If it is a lexical verb, then is it transitive or intransitive? Then we also have regular and irregular verbs that I will not go into today. Now, certain mistakes come when we translate from the mother tongue. In Telugu, we say endukante. So, we translate, I came late, look at your screen. Why because? Endukante, why because? I missed the bus. In English, such a construction does not exist. Why cannot come with because? Because why also has a similar function. So, we remove why and say I came late because I missed the bus. Remove the light, we say. Tise, you know, tise implies remove, but we do not put like that. We say switch off, switch off. Look at your screen, you will say remove the light when you leave the room. It said switch off the light when you leave the room. The words switch off and remove are synonyms in Telugu. They are not synonyms in English. So, very often we make structural mistakes when we go into the mother tongue translations. Then, you know, some more examples are there, similar mother tongue translation. Put off the light when you leave the room, we can say. We are going to our native place during the vacation. Now, native place is something which we do not use. We say village, we say hometown, we say town or we are going home on vacation. Home might be village, home might be city, home might be another country, whatever. But we are, when we say native place, that is an Indianism. Now, we are going not going to teach our students only Indianisms, because many of our students are working all over the world when they grow up. If you find the people who are working abroad, they keep saying, please teach us English, we do not know English. They are working in English speaking countries, they do not know English. That is because teachers did not teach them English. So, we have to be careful. Indians have another great problem and that is prepositions, because prepositions also create a problem. I would recommend for students who are appearing for competitive exams to make out a list of all verbs, all adjectives and all um, uh, you know nouns which have specific prepositions of their own. There are other prepositions also like time always has prepositions of their own, place and position have prepositions on their own. So, take a book or take your computer and make a long list of thousands of words you know in English and the preposition which they follow. Then you check up your dictionary, is this the preposition for this word? Then you are safe. You can learn like that. No grammar book will tell you all the prepositions. You have to work it yourself. Look at your uh, screen which says, she is proud about her new house. She is proud about her result. Many things we hear all the time. We do not say proud about. Proud is an adjective which always takes the preposition of. So, we say she is proud of her result. She is proud of her success. She is proud of her house we are proud of our performance, always proud of. So, when we listed the adjectives, we found that proud has of. Whenever you use proud, you can use that. Very many people say, I congratulate you for your success. That is not correct. We always congratulate on. So, everybody congratulated me on my success. I congratulate you on your success. 
congratulation, congratulate, congratulated, all these words take the preposition on. Similarly, look at the second sentence, which is mistake. Jump is a verb of movement. All verbs of movement take a preposition of movement. If you say he jumped in the pond, that is a static verb. I say he is already in the pond, he is swimming in the pond, he is you know standing in the pond, correct. But jump means point 1 to point 2, there is movement. So, jumped into the pond, that difference of preposition with the movement. Then we or phone line already owner mana all question. Fine. Right. Oh, me peru me rekhani chhima tar to naar chappi me prashna is first angad gandi. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Madam, our Karnataka district pade pade me madam. Hmm. Right. Chappani. Ma tar dani. Madam, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Madam, our Karnataka district pade pade me madam. Ma tar dani, madam. Okay. Madam, our language pade pade madam Hindi. Hmm. फोन हेलो प्रश्न स्पष्ट मी फोन लाइन डिस्टर्बेंस होने लगी क्लियर का मार्टल डेनी प्लीज ट्राई योर वॉल्यूम कंट्रोल ओनली योर वॉइस इस कमिंग बट द वर्ड्स आर नॉट क्लियर ओके इफ यू मेक द कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम जीरो आई थिंक वी कैन हियर यू क्लियरली राइट मेरा मन में ये सब्जेक्ट लग गया Sometimes mistakes are also there for misplaced modifiers. A modifier is adjective or adverb. Now look at the sentence which is on your screen. The lesson has only five exercises. That is the correct form. But very often only is put in in front. It says the lesson only has five exercises. That means you are changing the meaning by changing a simple word. If it says that the lesson has only five exercises, that means you wanted more. The number of exercises you wanted were more. Therefore, you have to be very careful in the use of modifiers. Very often it so happens that corrections in competitive exams give questions like this. Now, there are certain slides of pronunciation, punctuation and uh, spelling which I do not think we will be able to do now. An important question which comes in the examination also is the vocabulary. So, different types of vocabulary forms are there. The first example which I have given you on the screen which you can see is the words which are often misused, the word affect and the word effect, the word p o u r and p o r e both are pronounced in the same way. Similarly, whole, then beside and besides, then alter and alter, allowed and allowed. These are also words which are pronounced similarly, but they have a completely different meaning. The best way for you to learn this meaning would be that you make sentences and you show the difference. For instance, A L T E R and A L T A R, I can tell you the one sentence with each. You have to alter this exercise that means change. 
So, with one exercise you have done, I say you please change it. So, I am using the word a l t e r, alter change. But if you change the e into a, a l t a r, it is the place of worship. You know, in the puja room, we have an open place, a place where we put the gods, that is the altar. In the church, you have a big place, you know, where the figures of Christ or the Mother Mary you find that is the altar with a T A R. So, everybody is worshipping at the altar, if we say, that means they are paying their respect to God. This is the way in which the words, although they appear similar, very often confused, you have to choose. In the examination, they might give you both and they might ask you to choose one. The next point in vocabulary is redundancy. That means? Let me know phone line loss. Phone loss. Sir. Right. Uh, phone line loss. Me peru me rekanu chima atlaar tuna raja pi me prashnas first angad gandi. Hello. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. I'm Harita from Karim Nagar, ma'am. Very good. Uh, ma'am. Uh, how many marks we can expect from uh, English? I mean, section three. Do you have any correct ante? You may even add a correct figure till years later. Fifty marks confirm unco vacha. How good is your English? How good are you at English? Uh, okay. Uh, see, uh, if you uh, are. I poked, think I am uh, seventy percent, madam. You are 70 percent. So, out of 50 you might expect, see even 70 percent you might be little confused in the exam. So, a 70 percent uh, uh, knowledge might get you about 60 percent. So, uh, if you have 50 marks you will get about 30 in that. Yeah. Okay, You can be sure, but then do not be overconfident that you will get, because sometimes uh -huh. even uh -huh. if your no English man. is not no very man. good, not. you might uh -huh. get no. very good marks. Okay. I am not, I am not uh, asking like that, madam. Yeah. I am concentration English paina chayocha. Ah, tappakunda chayanji, meiru anni English lo ne chappala ippudu. Mana yeah, yeah. KG to PG anni English medium hai ippodhu na ippudu. Meiru ah, a yeah. subject chapte English lo ne chappala, ippudu me yeah. English hai test chase thunna aru andu ke. Meiru English ah, lo chala okay. concentrate chayanji. Okay, very nice. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, ma'am, very much uh, for uh, giving all the details uh, the regarding the hard skills, uh, prepositions, and the vocabulary within a very short time. Thank you. So, here I have a very small doubt, ma'am. I actually normally, so as we know that we should not use a uh, hard skill before uh, the words like uh, school, college, and uh, university. Not so always. Today, Please remember, not always. Only when they are uh, used for the primary purpose. Suppose you yeah, are yeah, going to it, your yeah. school of your brother, then you have to say the school, because you are not a student, somebody else is a student. Yeah, that's okay, ma'am. That's okay. okay. Here, what is the, my doubt, ma'am? Ma. So, here, uh, uh, when, uh, while we are using uh, for uh, primary purpose, we should not have hard skills. Right. But uh, today, here, what I observed one sentence has uh, given that here is the college. Huh. Here is the college. Right. So, here, I don't know regarding uh, whether that is a primary purpose or a secondary purpose. Mm. So, how we use that, that is uh, my doubt, ma'am. Please, uh, please, can you give uh, regarding the clarification? Yes, that, you know, so when you… Beginning of a use that, here is the college. Yes, okay. yes, I have, I have understood your question. Just listen okay, to sir. this explanation. You know, suppose this, uh, here is the college, is like giving directions. You are looking for a specific college, then that specific college requires a specific article. I explained to you that the article the is for specific purposes. Suppose you are looking for a particular college, then somebody is telling you here is the college. That means, they are pointing out to a specific college which you are looking for. Now, suppose that person also does not know, then he will say, suppose you say I want to look for one specific name of college, then that person might find out because that person also does not know. Then they say here is a college. That means, you are using indefinite article. That means, I am not sure whether this is the college you are looking for. 
that is one meaning which comes. Suppose you say here is college, the sentence is completely wrong because you have asked for a specific college, you have not asked for a college as a concept. Where the college is a concept giving education, there alone the college can be without an article, that is what we call a zero article. When you say how much have you studied, then answer can be given up to college. That means, you have studied either UG or PG courses, there you are using the word college for a concept. That is the reason why you have to remember that unless you know the meaning of the sentence, grammar can never be learnt in individual sentences. We are teaching in our schools and colleges in individual sentences. I also gave you so many examples in individual sentences, but this process is completely the wrong process of teaching grammar. Right madam, I have 5 minutes time on the madam, I have to English students yeah, this was a very good question which we were asked just now which I replied to. I think if all our future teachers and our students start thinking like this, you know they analyze each sentence in their life, the English will become very good. But let me tell you one thing that by learning English, let us not forget our mother tongue. This was the fear of all our leaders when they introduced the regional medium. The regional medium was introduced many years after independence. They felt that if you learn only English, you will forget your mother tongue. So, I would like all of us to remember that each student needs to learn English, because it is for their professional life, but each student needs to learn their mother tongue for their personal life. I find people who do not know a word of English calling their parents as mummy and papa. Why can't they call us with the call them by Indian names? What is wrong by saying Amma? Amma is such a beautiful word. Why should we say Mama or why should we say Mummy? This is what is important. Now, many aspects of vocabulary can be learnt if you concentrate on the dictionary. Every day make a habit of reading your dictionary at least one page every day. Whenever you read anything, now you are reading economics, you are reading all your other subjects, you will find that all of them are written in English, I hope. If they are written in English, then obviously, you have to very clearly see the English aspect of it and the subject aspect of it. Just now, one of the speakers said that she is reading history, she is reading economics, etcetera. So, if these are also written in the language English, <coughs> you only pay attention to the economics part of it and not to the English part of it, your English will never improve. So, please make it a point to look at the language and the content. Whenever we are reading anything, we should also remember in which language it is written. Is it written in Telugu? Are you reading a book of economics in Telugu? then your Telugu is becoming better. No harm, we all want to learn Telugu, but if you are reading it in English and you are ignoring the English and only reading the concept of economics, that means you are not improving your English. So, to improve English, we need to look at real life situations. Always concentrate on the real life situation, then your English will improve. Two things I have tried to highlight today that is one of them is grammar, which is very important. Thousands and thousands of students send me emails every day saying, tell us a grammar book. It is no use learning grammar from a book. Then when somebody asks you to speak, somebody asks you to write, you will look at your grammar book. We do not want you to look at your grammar book, you can never speak from a grammar book. To speak a language correctly, you have to practice and practice. Look at how the small child makes so many grammatical mistakes in the use of the mother tongue. We all made mistakes in our own mother tongue. Now, we have learnt beautifully our own mother tongue. English also, we can learn like that. 
రైట్ మేడం క్లాస్ పొడిగించమని మనకు ఫోన్ కాల్స్ బాగా వస్తున్నాయి ఇంకొక టెన్ మినిట్స్ వరకు మనం క్లాస్ పొడిగిస్తున్నాం మేడం ఒక బిలరీ ఎలాగ మిగతా సబ్జెక్ట్ కూడా ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయండి సో వన్స్ మోర్ ఇఫ్ వీ కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు వాట్ ఐ వాజ్ సేయింగ్ యు నో దెర్ ఈస్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ ఆఫ్ రిడాండెన్సీ ఇఫ్ దిట్ ఈస్ షోన్ ఆన్ యువర్ స్క్రీన్ యూ విల్ బీ ఏబుల్ టు సీ బట్ అదర్వైజ్ ఐ విల్ టెల్ యూ దట్ సమ్టైమ్స్ వీ యూజ్ టూ వర్డ్స్ వేర్ వన్ వర్డ్ ఈస్ ఇనఫ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ గివెన్ దిస్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ బై సేయింగ్ రిటర్న్ బ్యాక్ దిస్ బుక్ టు ద లైబ్రరీ what does it mean it means that the word return and the word back are unnecessary repetition either we have to say give back this book to the library give and back are not the same meaning or we have to say return this book to the library return means to give back so we are saying to give back give back two times this is redundancy that means extra we are using in our indian languages we say cousin brother cousin sister etc this is redundancy we can say cousin cousin means boy and girl both we need not specify relationships in our languages are very rich very varied you know we have uncle one word in english we have 10 different relationships in uncle in india that means indian relationships are very beautiful they are very wide we don't have words for that so wherever we don't have words wherever we want to use words it becomes an indianism indianism is very good if we are staying in india but when we go outside india our students might be going elsewhere to study our students might be going elsewhere to work today it is a global village so we have to train our students to be able to live anywhere in the whole world then we have to learn english without redundancy similarly i have given you know my cousin sister is a doctor don't say say my cousin is a doctor then i can able to help you tomorrow can means ability able means capability so the word is repeated everybody is constantly saying i can able to i can able to so you can say i can help you tomorrow or i shall be able to help you tomorrow can and able mean the same thing so either remove can or remove able in which case the sentence becomes correct then we have something called as phrasal verbs in the vocabulary the phrasal verb is a combination of a verb and a preposition but they the combination is not only external it is not like putting two words together and making the same meaning the meaning changes completely and that is why we call it as an idiomatic usage an idiom is a word which has more than its lexical meaning more than its dictionary meaning so here you notice in on your screen i have used the verb call the verb call with two different prepositions so one of them i can you can call on him tomorrow the meaning of call on is to visit you know i called on my friend many guests call on the vice chancellor that means visit the word is visit you are using a phrasal verb call verb plus on preposition but if you change the preposition you can say call up call up means telephone you know we are all constantly doing that so you can call up tomorrow that means you can make a telephone call similarly the verb broke broke away you know you see it happening in the political parties all the time one party broke away from the other so dissociate broke down means to start crying so by changing the preposition and keeping the verb the same we are changing the right madam maroka phone line lo unnaru sir cheppandi mee peru meer ekka nunchi maatladutunnaru cheppi mee prashna ni adagandi sailaja yeah maatladandi sailaja mee prashna adagandi hello uh, good afternoon madam good afternoon Ma'am, I have one doubt in articles, ma'am. Tell me. 
uh, in articles you have just now explained about where to use an and a mm. uh, so i was a little bit confused uh, regarding with, uh, in using uh, an mm. and we use for some time and a university we are using so uh. we should follow the sound sir or we should follow the vowel sir we should always follow the sound and not the spelling okay please remember that english is not a very phonetic language so the sound and the spelling are not the same that is why we have to always follow the spelling i mean the pronunciation and we should not follow the way in which it is spelt so we are spelling university with a vowel but we are pronouncing with a consonant that is why i said a university we are writing honest with a consonant we are pronouncing vowel or or that is why we say a uh, honest like that so, you can write down uh, you know uh, we are saying an honest i'm sure sorry because we are pronouncing the vowel wherever the vowel sound is pronounced please use an you try to say a uh, with a vowel sound you'll find it is impossible why the na sound is used is because two vowels side by side cannot be pronounced you know we have to break with the consonant that is why we are putting an whereas if a consonant is already there then the word a uh is used so you have to look at the pronunciation we get special pronunciation dictionaries which you can have these days if you go to dictionary.com on your uh, you know cell phone or your computer you can easily get the pronunciation also there is a small mic you press it you will get pronunciation so you can keep listening to the pronunciation pronouncing it yourself checking whether the pronunciation is vowel or consonant and then decide on the article don't go by the spelling right madam thank you madam okay chala english lo chala vilavaina samacharanni anni chara abhyarthulaku chala useful ga untundi thank you madam idi oka veli program miss aina vallu kuda mana tv softnet.com lo kani youtube lo kani ee program chusa avakasam undi next class lo पोलिटल सिस्टम इन इंडिया अंत भारत भारत राजकीय व्यवस्थ गुरी दीपिका मैडम मरी सामचारा अंदर चूस्ट मन की